Are you ready for some footy? <laughs> yes, mate, I am. Footy finals are back. G'day, I'm your host, James Clements, not to be confused with Angelo Lekas. There's a blast from the past. Who? Leo, do you know Angelo Lekas? Yeah, ex Hall right? That's right. Yeah. Now I was going to say. Oh, I, I didn't even know yeah. that. Paying attention there, everyone, apparently. Uh, this go. is the AFL Today Show. We are live on the internet. Once more. Uh, this is, of course, brought to you by Top Sport, the home of footy finals. Uh, we are joined, as usual, by a couple of local weirdos. Many would call them AFL experts, perhaps just full-blown footy nuffs. Over there, it's the little fella, the stats boy. Yeah, I will never get tired of that intro, won't I? Yeah, pump for footy finals. We're up and about. Hockball is absolutely flying, so yes. Leo's on the show, so very excited. Uh, I would have expected this man, social boy Leo, to be on a treadly like to go hang out and watch his Hawks play in Adelaide tomorrow and instead he's here. Like, what's happening? I just did not act fast enough to get tickets, unfortunately. You but can also wait for the grand final. Uh, th- yeah. That's a bit fast. <laughs> but, oh, Jim, can you can you smell it? <laughs> semi-finals. 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 Is. Semi-final oh, fever. I, I can't smell it. Okay, that's something else. <laughs> that's, that's BO. I had a, uh, <laughs> yeah, yesterday I had a big case of footy finals fever and just as the depression of the weekend of <laughs> Brisbane beating in the head of Carlton. He's been cured. <laughs> just it sucks. <laughs> I'm just like, hang on a second. My team's not here anymore. Like, I've got nothing to talk about. This sucks. But no, I do have a fever. It is finals fever. And uh, before we get into a Chockers Thursday night team show. So, of course, we are live. So we're going to be reading out lots of comments, comments and yeah. all the good stuff that's rolling in, uh, which is always great. So you better be subscribed to the YouTube so you can actually comment because we'll be doing yep. this for the Thursday shows from here on out. And, of course, I don't know, we'll do a Brownlow show. It's going to have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but either way, make sure you're getting around on YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, X. Uh, and, of course, what do you, you do the little bell on YouTube. Yeah, got to get the bell. Got to do the bell so you get your notifications. All notifications. When yes, it goes yes. live. That's the big key thing there. When you go live, you yep. get the thing that tells you it's going live. It's <laughs> exactly. Great. Whiskey. All right, let's do it. <laughs> let's do some news. We've got a few minutes before the teams kick in for these two <laughs> massive semifinals. But broken last night by our very good friend, guest of the program, recurring guest, one of our best mates, we'd say, Callum Dick, he reported that Mac Andrew had signed a lengthy contract extension uh, to the tune where it could be the longest and most lucrative. Uh, right, this well, has got to be a joke, right? Like twelve million for a guy that hasn't hasn't even proven himself yet. Get out of it! But like, come a, on, that is a joke. But that's the thing, there, stats man. So the Gold Coast Suns have gone to their amazing key position back, and also apparently forward in your face, Essendon swing man. Yeah, Mac Andrew and going. All right, here's a five year extension, and there's also a clause in your contract that could trigger an extra four years which would make you the longest contracted player on our list and just it could be worth as much as 12 mil over nine years. What do we think the clause is? Uh, health, I would say. No, apparently, yeah, health and I think it's to do with the amount of games he plays every yeah. year. So if, he, if, they're, if he's still getting picked because they're probably going, oh, in this amount of time we're going to play a lot of finals, that's probably what they're thinking. If he's still in that finals team, then he's going to yeah get that nine years, which is unbelievable. I think there's Norton and there's someone else that has 20 to 32 contracts. Yeah. He's could go all the way to 2034. This is that thing you were talking about last time. About so the years are just flying I by. Hate, I hate this. So, it just makes me feel so old. <laughs> yeah. As I've said time and time before, I remember doing like talking NBA gear uh, for the LeBron's decision. That was in 2010. And I'm like, ah, they're all clearing cap space. 2010 will take forever to come around. <laughs> 2024! <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> LeBron's 400 million years old at this point, and the Knicks are relevant again. They were trying to see, they were clearing as much cap space as they could. Yes. So, like, one of D Wade, Chris Bosch, LeBron, whatever. It worked. And uh, instead, they got Amari. And it didn't oh, quite for the work Knicks, out, yes, yes. Anyway, yes. Uh, good stuff. Mac Andrew, 2034, just, I, I can't deal with that. Like, 2030 just hurts anyway, my brain. I just don't like these long contracts. Like, a big, lanky guy like him, you don't know how, like, his body's going to hold up, how how good he's going to be. I, I do think he's going to be really good, but he's not even going to be in their top few players. You think players. he's going to be a really good? I think he's going to be a superstar. Oh, I genuinely think okay. he's going to be one of the best players of the competition. I oh. That doesn't mean, though, I agree with the length yeah, of the fair, contract. Fair. I think 2030, actually, oh, oh, yeah. that would be fine. I agree. Don't know about the extra clause, but I... I think he'll be an absolute gun. I do okay. feel like we should be capping them at six years. Yeah, like I'm happy maximum with that. It's five, to do, we've talked about five, this six, out, right? It's great yeah. for the club because as the salary cap goes yeah. up, they have to pay him less, less percentage, you're laughing. But at the same time, I think there's just so many known unknowns as you get into like That's those true. extra yep. years. You're like, 
in eight years' time, <laughs> what could happen? Like, yeah. Who no one knows clearly. That's, that's my theory. I and do agree he's going to be a gun. Yeah. But I think he's an absolute weapon, and I think his skill set is exactly perfect for the modern AFL game. I think Gold Coast, the last point I'll make on it, is like so many players leave. So they're like, yeah, we finally just want to lock someone in because Rankin obviously left. King yeah. was yep. thinking about leaving. A Lukosius, lot of smart Lukosius, So they're like, all right, whoever we can lock in, we're just giving 12 <laughs> mil. And they're just like, ah, Mac can, Mac can do. Me and my best mate, Jed Walter, we're going to get a house together. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't. Big brother. <laughs> other extensions, Buku Kamas, two-year extension like down yep. at the Dogs. And same with Taylor Jure and Lockie McNeil. Yep. Uh, they both signed deals today too. So uh, the Dogs Jure. going, how can we lock in a seventh-place finish for the next year? I was going to say, none of them are standing out. But I do think Buku, Buku has a decent, is, decent future, yeah. He popped off, like especially when Liam Jones wasn't there this year. Like mm. I feel like good he was just really, really, really good mm -hmm. for them. And, uh, yeah, I don't mind that. Uh, other, I guess, list news is the Dockers delisted Matt Taverner, who oh. kicked, what, 37 goals two years ago? Well, even – he, he made the AA squad in 2020 he with did, 29 yeah. goals. Wow. I think that's he, right. was, he was really good for, injuries. like, a three-year stretch, but then so many injuries, injuries have cost absolutely him. Ruined him. Was it good or was it just like they had no one else that's true. on the list? That could he kicked 47 forward. goals and then 44 goals in 2018, 40, 20, okay, eight. I'll give him So that's credit. more than two okay. goals a game. He was averaging 2018, 2019. Then he kicked 37, 42. So he was pretty consistent. Yeah, I'll give you that. For a guy that's undersized, as a, but he's, he's not gonna, dropped off a cliff He's not going to overtake – uh, Tracy or Tracy Amiss. Or, um, All Hoss. I'm saying is, as yeah, a North Hoss. fan, I'd rather him than Josh Kennedy. Oh, there you go. Josh Kennedy. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> not Josh I think Kennedy. Bring back <laughs> Josh Kennedy for <laughs> North. Josh Kennedy. <laughs> Jack honest, Darling. He might be better he than Jack Darling. Darling. Better. I'm saying that much. <laughs> sorry, Jack the Darling. The wrong guy retired. I would rather the, uh, the crab, as some people, the Freo fans call him. They call him the crab. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, Tabernard than yeah, than Jack Darling. That's what I'd agree with that. To be honest. Other list news. Jake Stringer. There are whispers that he's done in Essendon. What a surprise. Uh, my favourite part is Collingwood fans trying to wrap their heads around them going and getting Jake Stringer. They just like, oh, I don't want to do it. Sorry. I'll, they I'll, sort of I'll, need Collingwood, I'll Collingwood it up. Oh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> there we go. Nailed it. I'm from Maui. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm from Maui. That, that like, famous Wearing video. your slippers and away we go. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> that was the good stuff. Uh, but Jakey Stringer, I, to be honest, I hate how much I like him on Collingwood. Yeah, I already fits. hate him. Really? I already no, hate I don't him. Mind him as well. I think it's a good fit. Yeah. But they uh, need a forward. They do also they need a forward. How much are we betting on Jake Stringer in the um, Anzac Day medal for the Anzac Day medal against them? <laughs> just a revenge know. game. Are we? I don't know. I'm just I'm just trying to hype something up out of it. But I do think he's he's okay. He's still got what? Uh a goal over I don't a goal think again. Collingwood need him though. Do they? Like they need a forward. But yeah, you're probably someone better. But I, I think he's know. a I decent. Know, I don't even think they need a forward to be honest. Oh, Interesting. Sure key forward, if anything. Hmm. Interesting stuff. <laughs> Just uh, small ball. Other ones. Uh, there's some interesting gear around the John Noble deal popping off uh, with Sam Edmonds and stuff. We love John Noble. Uh, we love John Noble. What is he? The weapon. Uh, <laughs> it sounds stupid though. It is like. This is the weird part of the trade period where we just get the first initial tire kicks, right? And you sort of get these reported back to us. And it's just all posturing. Yeah, that's all it is. Literally. Right? It's mm -hmm. like and the other one actually is Tom Barras and West Coast. West Coast. Oh, we need two first for Tom Barras. Everyone's like, sure. I mean, you can want what you want. We'll see what they pay. <laughs> yeah, that's all it sort of comes down to. I think he's going. Right? Yeah, considering he's under contract for a million years and has already nominated that he's going to Hawthorne. Uh, but the same thing with the John Noble deal, right? Like the Pies haven't <coughs> haven't apparently asked for pick number twelve. People were talking about that. Everyone's like, you're insane. They're not going to do give up twelve for nah. John Noble. Definitely as much not. as we love the weapon. Uh, and <laughs> apparently, Gold Coast are like, oh, we're not going to pay him 800 grand. And he, he's like, what? Oh, I thought that's what, well, that's what was come reported. Come on, on. It's Johnny like, Noble. John Noble, settle down, mate. You're good. Are you 800 Just grand? Just get a good? game first, mate. And then it then got sort of put into this one as well. Oh, yeah, around four years for around 600K looks more likely. And you're like, that seems fair. That seems about right. Yeah. John Noble. Yep. Like, I do love, this is also the fun part of the trade period where it's like, Guys on the – maybe not so much the fringes, but not in your top eight players, maybe not in your top 12 players. 12, yeah. yeah. It's like, ah, oh, here we go. We're going to talk about the John Noble deal. It's like, does, how much does he move your needle? And I think not he's a that. very good user. I think he's a very good yeah. player. I think he would play in most teams other than like, – yeah, And Collingwood. 600K four years feels wildly fair for the weapon. I don't mind it. A little bit less, but yeah. A little yeah. bit less. All right. I'll pay you less. There we go. Uh, <laughs> You're paid. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are getting paid. <laughs> so the Barras deal, how do we feel about that as well? Two firsts, what do we reckon? Oh, that's a bit much. They have and all the uh, power though, don't they, West Coast? 
And I think Hawthorne might Hawthorne might still do it because yeah. they really need a key defender. Well, the other thing is our pick is going higher every week. Like our first round pick. Yes. Yeah, it keeps so pushing out and out and out. Was and it then 10? You got the, now it's like, what, 14? And then the power. be one. And no, then by no. the time the, the pick one, actually rolls around away. with the father, sons, and yes, academy it's picks. It's going to be in the 20s probably. Back, so so Ooh, that doesn't they help, probably yeah. would want that pick and then a future, yep. which... I think that's not too bad because Barras is a jet and you really uh, need Potentially it. if we get like a third back, I'd, I'd take it to be honest. Good yeah. stuff. All right. Jared Lyons retires. 194 games across what? Radelaide, the Suns, the Lions. He had a hard done by career. He was a good player for a few years there. Supercoach yep. gem for Absolute, about three years. Absolute jet uh, on like, the Supercoach. I think figure. it was one year bef- at Brisbane before he went into it. He was like over 600,000 mm. in Supercoach in price. He was awesome. Yeah. Uh, injuries just obviously took their toll on him over the years. And just and years and getting years. dunkly as well. Like, yeah. that was his role, right? Like, uh, speaking of Brisbane, Chris Fagan's contract. This is uh, not official or anything, but I think it's basically uh, in the works, is that yep. Brisbane are trying to head off any sort of contract talk about Chris Fagan uh, and to basically extend his contract for one more year, which I think ends at ne- end of next year to have it at the end of 2026. Which, because they beat Carlton on the weekend... You've won a final. If you get obliterated once more, which we'll talk about later, because their record away from home in finals is, uh, checks the notes, abysmal. Uh, if they get smashed again away from home in a final, do you suddenly just go, oh, I don't know if that extension was <coughs> the right idea, but here we are. I think their theory is their team is, this is the the window, like I think you said on 100%. the show last week or earlier. And the week, they've got yeah. so many good young development yeah. dudes as well that it, they have obviously worked. Mm. Like, all the Ashcroft dudes, like you look at Kyle Loman this year as well, stuff like Fletcher. that. Exactly. Yeah, I think their game, it's like it's not even, I don't think it's even to do with Fagan. Sometimes it's literally just their inaccuracy in front of goal or, or Joe Danaher just does three things. You're going, Joe, he could be the one of the best players in the comp, but then you just cook it. I don't think that's anything to do with Fagan. So I, I think that's what they're thinking. They're like, we have all the pieces, but we're just not, it's just not clicking because they should have won a flag the last, what, five years or, or so? Say, Surely you could say Melbourne could have cashed in more. Melbourne. Geelong could have cashed in more. Oh, but Brisbane's team on saying paper, that anyone so deserves a flag. No, I didn't say deserves. I said they should have a flag, Jim. What yeah, do you think? No, they definitely, definitely don't. <laughs> twenty twenty five. <laughs> hashtag flag is. I am just twenty twenty five is just thirtieth anniversary. <laughs> it's going to be on for young and old, old next year. Uh, Sam Collins won the Suns' best and fairest, which is kind of fun. Yeah, that, that backs up my Collins. point about Sam Flanders. Using the ball, but yep. what, 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 what of it? Well, so we actually, <laughs> what of it? <laughs> what was going is that the moon? So we will also, <laughs> is that the moon? Uh, we will actually talk about this when we talk about our Brownlow stuff, but Sam Flanders is one of the interesting head to head looks for some of those Brownlow picks. Yes. Interesting. Uh, for some of the Brownlow betting markets. Fascinating setup because I think you look at some of the home games that the Suns played, Noah Anderson obviously played awesome, but Sam Collins was so instrumental, wins the best and fairest, mm. and was really good all year yep. too. Like, I do wonder where the likes of Raul, Flanders, Took Miller actually land. Anderson. Mm. Anderson in a brown low count. Anderson so. at home, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so keep an eye on that. We shall. Uh, and then the final little bit. This was a tough one. Callum Mills already out yeah. for the prelim. So this happened after – well, this came out after we did yesterday's show. Uh, Ping to Hammy at training. Oh, that's literally the last thing you want as oh, the great. Sydney Swans. That, all their fans would be like, we've got some fans in the comments. They'll be filthy. It's also happened to him before. I yes. think for the 16. Possibly. Point, somewhere. Yeah. I'll have a look. Uh, up the Swanee says LOL's cow productions. I'll pay that. They've been on a few lives. So and thanks uh, for that. it is like Callum Mills being out for the prelim. There is this amazing setup where Taylor Adams could come back. Oh, surely not. And then get dropped again for another grand final. Whoa. Two oh. years straight, being dropped that, for a grand that final. That would be brutal, wouldn't it? How do you leave Collingwood, you've missed the granny, you go to Sydney, we're in the grand final. Taylor, you've been dropped, mate. <laughs> <Maybe> oh! Just- <laughs> what are we doing? Maybe just play Bello in the prelim and go and get dropped. All right. Uh, no, that was a bit harsh. <laughs> uh, and, of course, if Alex was here, he'd be like, you can't play Colin Mills in the grand final. We want to see what happens this Sam Reid. And away we go. So, he did a big tweet uh, about that, actually. I'm sure I, just, he did. I just saw that. I would not be surprised if he's already <laughs> he, tweeted he, about He's it. loving the, the rage. Sam Reid, it costs us the 2022 grand final. Like, they got killed by 200 million points. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Brooke Watson points out that Port have a key defender for sale. Do they? So Dan Houston, oh, oh yeah, not exactly apparently key, key there's defender. three clubs that so are going for him. There are a raft of clubs. Is uh, it three or four? The, 
in the Dan Houston Stokes. I was hoping to uh, say North. To the point where it's been touted as a five-club race for Dan Houston. (sighs) And as a Blues fan, I'm sitting there going, yes, usage out of the back half is very important. Um, But at the same time, the Blues... You already have... Presumably, Doherty comes back healthy fully again next year. Uh, You have... Saad. You've got Saad coming off of that. Saad's the same sort of player. but Mitch McGovern as well. But at the same time, like, Houston's just really good. Yeah, he's better than all those players. I think sometimes you just go... Good shiny thing. (laughs) Come here. Get good dude in team. (laughs) Make work good. It's just sometimes it's that easy. But anyway, the Blues, St Kilda, Collingwood, and the Dogs have apparently met with uh, Dan Houston as well. I heard North offered pick two. And North is in play to a lesser extent. What? (laughs) You haven't heard. And Melbourne is I'm initially like was initially that's one of the first teams they talked about, obviously, but no longer links. So, oh, Lowell's cow just talking about. I love Mills, but he won't play in the prelim preliminary or the grand final. You can't screw around with Hammies. No, it's like oh, it's a minor. It's like there's nothing minor. Because imagine it's he like goes down so again. early in the uh, granny, Pack and then up, the boys, sub their plan goes all out the window. Right. Uh, the one little bit before we get into the teams which have just dropped is they announced the final membership tallies oh. basically for this season. Do I have to look at that? Uh, <laughs> Should we go start it from the bottom now we're here? What sure. do we think? Sure. Yeah. My beloved Gold Coast Suns, 26,157. That is a very, very disappointing number. However, it is up 2,798 on the year prior. It's not really? bad. Really? Okay. That's, oh, Alex, that's what I call Alex has chimed in on the comments. Long why I won't risk it after Sam Reid in 2022. Yeah, he didn't see what you said five minutes ago. Absolutely nailed it, didn't I? <laughs> Jim has nailed the Alex impression. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's in the room with us. That's weird. Uh, we're scared. <laughs> uh, but that's the, I'd call that the Jed Walter corollary uh, up over 2,500. <laughs> Is that why they've the got Ned some Moyle corollary? Though. Maybe. To be honest, hey, sons, just look, I will take on like your vice president of common sense of memberships. I'm happy to go full tropical gym. I said it in the video on the weekend, <laughs> but you can't go too tropical. I was at people's school first. You can't get yeah, tropical, <laughs> but it was awesome. Like it's just like their stadium is just so nice and boutique and rad. And I'm like, I'm here for it. Let's go. Definitely going to go to a game next year. Uh, GWS at 36,629. North at 50,000, Stats Boy. Yeah, we've been there for ages. I, I want to look into the numbers a bit with these memberships so because I don't see 50,000 in any of our pet games. Memberships yeah, the pet well. memberships are always in there. So the two game memberships. Three game memberships. Three game memberships. Your home membership. There's different strata, of course. So uh, St Kilda over 60,400. Frio, 62. Western Bulldogs, 62. Brisbane, 63, which is up on 54. So Brisbane's. Membership as well, I think, is fascinating to look at because the sport, obviously, you know, being up there on the weekend, <coughs> people everywhere. Uh, but when they're in their absolute pomp in the early thousands, huge membership numbers, they hit a nadir in like the what tens or whatever. Mm. Yep. And then That's they're, they're really right bad. back back above sixty thousand, three thousand, which is awesome. Not awesome. Melbourne down five thousand two hundred. That surprises me. They've got five thousand for the demons, down from seventy thousand seven hundred eighty five. Small club. Well, they, they definitely Mino. don't turn up. Uh, Absolute Port Adelaide, 66,015, which I believe is a record. Sydney's is a record at 73,757. Wow. Which is up 8,000, which Jeez. is the fourth most. 8,425. Well. Adelaide, a record, 75,477. That'll go back down amazing. Yeah, surely. That's up 6,941 as well. I think that's the thrill thought perfection. That is, ju- that is actually Or the Rankin, thrill. maybe. Uh, Rankin. Essendon, 83,000. That's down from last year. Uh, Hawthorne, 83,000. Again, a new record there, Leo. Lovely. Very nice. Love to see it. Then you have Geelong at 90,000, a new record. That's up from 82. Jeez, that's a, that's a big 8, jump. 8,643 up on Where the Where are they getting all these members? Richmond down 3,000, uh, 98, 489, down from 101. West Coast, 103. That's just absurd. Uh, amazingly, West Coast's difference is like four people. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. <well. laughs> it's like, it's literally, it's like 103,498 up from 103,275. It's wild. You still have to have a waiting list to yeah. go to West Coast games, which no that. other team has. That's just, that's wild. Blue set a record 106,345 up from 95. That's making a prelim last year and having all the belief in the world. We'll see what that number is next year. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then 8, the Pies, a new record for them, and an insane 110,628. So, Carlton actually had the biggest move. They went up 11,000. Uh, that was the belief. Love the belief. The belief was then punctured by a horrible second <laughs> half. Uh, but there we go. So that's massive. awesome numbers. Melbourne, the big losers. Richmond, a bit of the losers. Essendon losers. North dipped a little bit. Mm. Uh, the Clarko ball effect did not kick, kick in. Stats boy, what happened? Well, that they didn't you show that on the field ball? either. 
instead. The Hawks. I'm. It'd be fascinating to see what the Hawks number is next year as well. That'll skyrocket. Well, the Hawks social media numbers. I tell you what. That's and just wait for Tassie to get included on this as well. Well, as we've just been, someone in the comments uh, did this one's win said Vic buys again, oh. not counting Tasmania two hundred thousand. I, I thought you read that. I didn't even see that. And then uh, Joel Duncan can't have Tasmania above the big Vic clubs. The uproar. <laughs> Do I count four times because I got four different memberships now? Have you got the Tassie one? I got the Tassie one. I'm going Gold Coast. 200,000 Tassie does not count. I think, didn't <laughs> I not... have to buy Greater Western Sydney as well on the weekend after? So they beat Brisbane. I think I mm. said something like that. It should only count if you actually go to a game. I wasn't even drinking at the Gabba and I'm still just like rabbiting on. Anyway, <laughs> uh, good stuff. Can't have Tasmania above the big big Vic clubs. The uproar says Joel Duncan. I like that. Yeah, I did just read um, that one, but that's all right. I hate that Lol, <laughs> Lol's Cow is, is saying 100% Alex, long way I won't risk it after Sam Reed in 2022. Or should I call you the best panellist on this show? Blow it out your nose, Lol's yeah, Cow. Yeah, wow. We're Jeez. right here. We're right here. Best panellist. <laughs> not even the best panellist on his own racing show. Oh, anyway. Oh, mate. <laughs> Check it out, man. <laughs> it's, that's it's good, good stuff. <laughs> now, the biggest thing is what happens this weekend, gentlemen? Uh, I'm more, not doing much. more finals footy. I'm going to yeah. play golf, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, more finals. Yes. Let's go. Let's Come go. on, finals. Let's I'm go. I'm about. Let's do some game previews. Semi final. Is it number two? Did we figure out which number <laughs> these ones are? Honestly, can we just call it semi final one? one. Semi, the first one, Friday night, the Adelaide yes. Oval. This is going to be awesome. Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide, $2.30. Underdogs at home, gentlemen. That of is course, crazy. All these odds are brought to you by our friends at Top Sport, the home of finals Absolutely. footy. Absolutely. Hawthorne, favorites at $1.62. Stats Boy, have those numbers changed oh. since the. Teams were announced. That's a very good question. That is about to load up on my answer. laptop. Two dollars thirty dollars sixty two. So no, it has no, not it changed. All right, the line is eight and a half points. Hawthorne's yep. favour, which is crazy, or is it crazy like a fox? Uh, one sixty six point <laughs> five is the over under two. How do we feel about this one? Should we start there, stats boy, with some of your stats really quickly? We can, yeah. So we got Port have won the last four home meetings with Hawthorne, uh, but have lost their last four finals, as we've touched on all week. Sorry, uh, Power Prawn Star in the comments. He was like, take it easy on Port. I don't know if we can with uh, some of the other things that have been going on. You said the over-under. Five of Port's last seven home games have gone over the total points, but the last meeting uh, went under against the Hawks. And But that was the Hawks sort of went in their shell a bit, and I think that could have gone over if the Hawks sort of put the foot on the gas. Do you remember, like the game where you obviously lost by one point was their last meeting. What game was that one? What game was that one? Yeah, the Hawks no, are up by 41 points one. in the last meeting. Nah. So I am still leaning towards the over, just the way the Hawks play, very open game style. And I think Port need to uh, bounce back on their offense. So they were forced to make uh, changes as well. Ryan Burton was out for the power. We sort of knew that was coming as well. Yep. Uh, Jed McEntee is out as well. In comes Todd Marshall. (laughs) Charlie Dixon keeps his spot. Oh, they're going tall. And Josh Sin. So they're going big against the Hawks. Yeah, Josh Sin's tall as well. I mean, that works. He's a backman though. Worked last week for the Dogs. Pause. Uh, That's a very good point, actually. In for the Hawks again. Another force change for the Hawks. Sam Frost out for the rest of the season. Yep. Sad. Uh, in comes Jai Saro. We knew that, that was coming. Yeah, we did know that one. So we actually mentioned this, I think, earlier. Hawthorne is so open with their ins and outs. Yeah. I, like, I, do, I, I do like it. it. We haven't done it all year. We've done it for finals, which yeah. I think has been good. Just, Just confident. sort of like no speculate. Even with the day stuff, we announced yeah. today yeah. a week before. And even yesterday, they're going... Oh, he trained. He did train, but he didn't do contact. But he trained. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he could play, but he didn't do contact. So. <laughs> yeah, so he's, no, he's not playing. We already said he's not playing. <laughs> it's good because it sets expectation. Yes, right? it's I good. Like it. I like no it. one's sort of frothing and losing their minds. Like so, Sam Day and Cam McKenzie were already sort of ruled out. Yep. We knew that Sam Frost everyone's was on the same page. Yeah, because yeah. everyone would be like to Will Day. Oh, you're going to play. You're going to play, and just don't have to deal with that for a week. You know? So would he be at the pub hanging out with his mates the night before? The no, game? you're not allowed to do that, Jim. Okay, just just. <laughs> I'm never allowed to leave the house. Then, <laughs> this is your house. I was gonna say, Where's Jim? The pub. Is he allowed there? Uh, uh, he's a grown man. Let him, <laughs> let him do what he wants. Not Come at on. 12 o'clock on a Wednesday, Jim, uh, in the midday. Sure, sure. That's enough. <laughs> that, was too that, was too <laughs> that was too easy. All right. So before the season finished, this was the eighth ranked offense in the port versus the sixth for the Hawks. Yep. And the defense was third ranked for the power and the Hawks are sixth. So th- we talked about this time and time and time again with the Hawks. Being in that premiership window out of nowhere mm. with six best best uh, for both offense and defense. But I think the best part about the Hawks stuff is it's even better than that. This is the craziest part. So since round five, when it was all falling apart, they're 15 and four. It's unbelievable. 15 and four, the Hawks are since round five. That is the best in the competition, gentlemen. That's Absolutely. pretty good. Hawkball mm. works. Uh, but on top of that, so nine of those wins were by at least 37 points, which is insane. And the best part, though, is two of those losses, two points. And the other lost one by point. one point to, to Port, whom? 
Port Adelaide. Yeah, so. with a 41 point lead, that, that was brutal. Shut up, stats. <laughs> I'm just saying the stats. <laughs> Absolutely remarkable. But on top of that, like this is not just like that, that sounds neat and mm. amazing because it is. But on top of that, they're ranked first for points and points against. Yeah. In that time, that's a very big stretch of time. What are we doing? On top of that, they're the best team in the AFL at generating points from clearance. That's good. Third best from turnover. That's also good. Third best from defensive half. That's not bad. And fourth best from kick-ins. That's Top four every in all big stats. part of the bloody ground. <laughs> what are we doing here, mate? That's that, insane. That is awesome. So, stats boy being such an analyst, yeah. He's, he's a great analyst. Oh, uh, yeah, cop that. Uh, <laughs> Cork's fans, no. But that is, I'll take like, on board. <laughs> no one else is top six in all of those categories at once. No. I'm just saying, Leo, what's that door over there? <laughs> Oh, it's the premiership door. No, I can't. They're winning the, the entire bloody thing. Get in the lid. I think it's the lid like, needs to be like half, <laughs> half, half, half. Maybe just half. A jar. Half. A, a jar. jar. That's the word, yeah. That's not a jar. That's a door. Uh, <laughs> stats, boy. Jesus. Give us some more stats, would you? Yeah, we've got plenty on this one. Uh, the Hawks, obviously that form uh, in that run, they've had, they've covered the line in the last eight times they've been favourites. So obviously favourites again in this one, which a lot of Hawks fans are going, oh, should we be favourites? But they've covered the line every time. So what's that line? Eight and a half. That's the one I'm leaning towards with top sport. I'm really happy with that one. Uh, what else have I got? The over-under. We can get into some player ones if we want as well. Well, there is a great point from Did This One's Win where oh, two yes. Hawks Port Adelaide finals have play, been yes. played previously. Both have been three-point Hawk wins. We actually watched the end of one of those just before. We did. That was To wild. get ourselves was sucked up. Was that the 2014 2014. Yeah, Brian exactly. Lake should have been called the holding the ball the siren. I was... Loved it. Crap at myself. <laughs> I was, I was yeah, like, oh my God, that's Well, you were like two, so yeah, yeah. you probably I wasn't were. even born. <laughs> 2014. We're scared. Yeah. Uh, so got a good stuff. <laughs> so with this in mind, so you talk about this, how Porter won last four at home against the Hawks. Mm. They also just don't win finals. So no. this is like the unstoppable force, the very stoppable force meets the very movable object at this point, right? Like, yeah. They can't win finals, but we're beating you at home. Uh, what happens? Who knows? This is awesome. So let's dig into a couple of player stats and vibes, and then we'll look at a uh, best look, and then we'll have a big question, stats man. Sure. Or do you want to go to the big question first before we do some player ones, or just get into it? Oh, he's changing it up. I think I'd rather do the big question before the tip. So I think sounds, we, get, yeah, in, okay, that sounds we good. get into the uh, yep. player vibes, and we'll sort no, of talk that, sounds that good. out. Uh, I'll start with Willie Rioli. We talked him up last week. Didn't do too Sorry. much. Willie! Willie! Willie yeah. Rioli, uh, he loves a snag against the Hawks. Three goals, four goals, and three goals in his last three matches against them. So, um, yeah, really happy with that one. Top sport, maybe just to, at least for two goals. I think that's a really good bet with, I think most sites have it two bucks. So when it comes on to top sport, get around that. Uh, Boak, surprisingly, also loves playing against the Hawks. I know that he's getting a little bit older, but 26 touches, 39, 34, and 26, his last four games against the Hawks. A few of those were when he was in his prime, but those last two were not that long ago, 26 and 39 disposals. Also had 20 last week against Geelong. So he's still got it, the uh, the old guy. Uh, then looking on the, uh, the younger guys for the Hawks, Massimo, we absolutely love him on this show. He's had 25-plus disposals in his last four matches. Had 28 against Port last time. That was sort of when he was building yep. into the season. And, and uh, yeah, from that point on, he's been awesome. He will probably play on Boke too, on the wing. Ooh, yeah, so on the wing, you reckon? Yeah, 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 he probably will, right? That will be a really good matchup. All right, I'm just happy for that. one of them to get 25, one of them to get 20, and then we're all happy for that one. Yes. Uh, we got a big call. Hawks, oh, from uh, did the Swans win. Hawks win by 10 goals plus Ken resigns during the post-game presser. Look, that that is... We'll put that in the big call section yeah. later. Uh, yeah, <laughs> That's pretty I, good. Can actually. I use that? Yeah. <laughs> Don't mind it. That's really good. Uh, and then the last one I want to talk about, we sort of still laugh a little bit about, oh, the Wizards are going to kick this sideways or things like that. He has really improved his goal kicking. So you got the first nine rounds. Um, everyone's sort of talking about it, but I wanted to put this in our show. Six goals, 18. So How many got, out in the full as well? Yeah. The fact that he's 18. getting like, how many in the era? <laughs> so the fact that he's 18. getting he's got, he had about thirty shots in the first nine rounds. That's yep. when everyone was like, "All right, he's going to be good. He just needs to get accurate." Sam Mitchell sat him down. Then the last eight games, he's kicked sixteen eight, which is just great yep. kicking. So the raps on him coming into the season mm. was that he was like wildly accurate as well. I thought wasn't he? I oh, I, I can't remember, I'm, but I don't th yeah. think so. I think it was more around just like he was. Excitement um, machine. Yeah, just exciting. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, small, and North, like, yeah. He's a midget. So small. the fact that he's kicking straight now is just awesome. And he sort of got over those mental barriers because he had a lot of games, 0 3, 0 2, 0 1. And he's just kicking straight. Got four goals in his first ever final. So get around the whiz. I like that. Mm. All right. So how does that lead itself into our best bet vibe Ooh. tip with Top Sports Stats Boy? What do you think the AFL Today show 
Same game multi is going to be. Oh, okay. Yeah, if we can get that up on screen, please, Gerald. A little, a little bit of a top sport thing there. Looks very nice. Uh, so we've got Jason Horn Francis, 20 plus disposals. Like it. He was really good last week and one of the only port players that can hold their head high. Massimo, as I mentioned, he's going to get 20. 25, but just being a little bit cautious like with the it. 20. I like on it. On Boke. Then we've got Willie Rioli, two plus goals. He dominated Loving last it. time. And then we'll finish with the uh, the two annoying the little rats. The, the small hawks. The small hawks. Uh, Jack Ginevan, anytime goal. Nick Watson, anytime goal. I don't Ginevan, know why you're saying Ginevan this. goal, I don't know. Because okay. Because he only got one last week in the last quarter. And yeah. he's been more up the ground. He's been uh, less selfish. Yep. Depends how many beers he has on Heinle. the other man. legs I really like. If we're doing yeah. a rate my multi, I'm giving that <laughs> oh, yeah. eight out of ten. Oh, there we go. Eight eight he's going to be my a multi rate my multi. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, if he's at the Strathmore the night before... Back tonight. We'll give a five. He's going to kick it back. <laughs> the Strathmore is a awesome. yeah, great pub. Uh, they come in pints. Talking uh, about uh, yeah, the whiz. We got a comment from uh, Mason. Did North make a mistake not getting Watson? No, that's silly. Poor. Hey, this... Come on, stats. Guy. Don't get sucked <laughs> in. Dersma's going to be a great no, player. No, Dersma's going to be a great player. But I said player. Watson Don't next season will it. be Australian and Dersma won't. So, oh, no. Have a cry about it. <laughs> so the AFL <laughs> Just today. A I like that question. The, the AFL Today Show, Sangay Multi, Hornet, 20 plus, Massimo, 20 plus, Willie, 2 plus, Ginevan Watson, any times. I love that. Yep. I'm very much It's sort of it. playing it safe, but you still get really good odds yeah. with top sports. So. Love you it. You just got to, yeah, as you said, Leo, I think, the Ginevan goal probably is the one that will give you pause. Because Watson plays closer to goal yep. than Ginevan, so. Uh, mine, every time the Port Adelaide power play, you know me, Stats Boy, I love my 25, 25, <laughs> yes. 20. Uh, which is the Butters 25, Rosie 25, Wines 20 plus. And Wines is the only one actually, I think, top 20. Yeah, the other three last week. Butters were got injured, obviously. Uh, Butters subbed off with eight at halftime. Rosie's uh, the one that's the worry because he's been a bit up and down. But He's yeah. had a roller coaster season. He's like been on uh, maybe it's not so much the Gravitron. What's the one that goes around? Vomitron? Yeah, we'll go. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I remember. Actually, yeah, yeah being up driving past, uh, what was it like the <laughs> Warner Brothers movie world and stuff on the weekend? And the squid just like, what's oh. that? I'm Close like, nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> I can't afford to get in We're there, going buddy. to people's first stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad's going to go stand out the front and shoot a video. Uh, but the 25, 25, 20 for Butters, Rosé, Wines, I'll still probably be on that just because I think the way that the Hawks play, the sort of back and forth nature that sometimes this can happen, especially Adelaide Oval as well, yeah. right? I think they really vibe on that Adelaide Oval crowd. It didn't work last week, but Butters was – before his injury was on his way, 25 might be a bit much to ask for a dude with busted ribs. Uh, but they're not broken. The x-rays and stuff are all clear, so Butters should be all good to go. He's been named, obviously. Yeah. And the other one is always going to be, for me, is the Horn Francis 20-plus and a goal. I really so, like that. At home yeah, as well. Yeah, at sure. home, he just always sort of – he sort of slings off that half-forward – sort of spot as they sort of rotate the three midfielders through sometimes Hornet will just go forward. They need to start them all in and there. And he needs the them middle. he needs to like give them a spark every so often. Yep. So he's usually that sort of anytime goal kicker it feels pretty safe. So yep. uh, they're my best ones. Right. Very good. But answer the big question, gentlemen. Will Port fire up for Ken one more time? Should be firing up for a lot of other things as well. Their fans, their own sort of uh, safety just when they're leaving the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I think I think they will. I think they will. I reckon no. they. I think Zach Butters is going to lead a charge here. You know that scene in uh, Avengers Endgame where it's just like, <laughs> uh, is it Captain America just sort of stands <laughs> yeah, up? That's yeah. going to be Zach Butters. Oh, okay. It, oh, isn't I thought you were going to be like, on your left. And yeah, like, they, all <laughs> they all start start like, Isn't that the? I don't know. Oh, I, I, to be honest, I'm not a big uh, <laughs> Avengers fan. I like the effort. I like the effort. I gave it a crack. I gave it a crack. <laughs> that's but that's going to be Zach Butters. He's going to lead the charge. Oh, I, I think yeah, Hawks are going to be way too strong. Ken, Ken won't have an answer for this, this, the tsunami of the Hawks. Like, I think ironically, Hawks Zach Butters because he looks like Ramsey Bolton. He's going to be much more like Jon Snow facing the charge <laughs> of Ramsey Bolton's uh, cavalry. By himself with the sword. Maybe. In Game of Thrones, just going, oh, God. If Butters has a sword, I will back Port, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> would they still win if he was given one sword? <laughs> I would they say were. so. Yeah. But no. you know who couldn't get taken down by a sword? Big Lloyd Meek. He, he would break the sword. He's a lord now. Did you see Yeah, they made him a lord. They made him a, a lord in he's got uh, a piece, Scotland. I saw that. How yeah. is this not in the news? What are you doing? I forgot about <laughs> anyway, that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but really, I think the big question that's like, so that's the initial Port question. Yes. Like, will they fire off a can? Will they fire off of that crowd? We've seen it happen before. So Port, backs against the wall, pressure's on Ken. They step up. All the fans get behind them. They can never tear us apart. And they turn around and save his job for the rest of the season. End up second on the ladder. They all know that if he loses this game, he's gone. So it's kind of like yeah. why it's sitting there. Uh, 
The other one for the Hawks is obviously Hawkball. Now that the pressure is on, this is... This this is it's been on for a half a year, though. But it hasn't. Like, no, this, it has. It bit. hasn't. There's been zero pressure on the Hawks this year. This is all found money. And I think okay, this yeah. year, like, making the finals for the Hawks was just like... This is awesome. They weren't favourites last week as well. Exactly. That's, a good, that's true. They've exceeded expectations now. So this is, again, just all house money from here. But now it's like actual, like, you guys can win the flag. Suddenly you hear that. You're like, mm. wait, we're good. We're going to win the flag. And you get your heads kicked in in Port Adelaide. It's the rite of passage of anyone who goes to Adelaide. I, I, I agree yeah. with you and I understand what you're saying. But at the same time, every game has been an elimination final true. for us. For like so the true. last 10 and games. Yeah. the point about... When you thinking, win that Carlton game in round 22, like it's yeah. like it's on for young and old from then. And like every game you had to keep on winning. And yeah. when you're thinking like, oh, the hearing, we're going to win the flag. I reckon Gidevin and McDonald were thinking better, that yeah. six weeks ago. Like they're probably all... <laughs> Gidevin's like, that's why like, I came here. Yeah, they're probably all <laughs> ahead of themselves like that. So we'll see what happens. I get what you're saying though. But my, like, so that's one side of it. I think the other side of it is they're, because they've exceeded expectations, they actually kind of have no pressure on them. Yeah. Like they can no, just play free. That. They just go, oh, we don't like <clears throat> we weren't expected to do anything this year. Like as a fan base, yeah. that you're like, all right, if we I'm lose not, this, you're still happy. I, I really for the wanted season. to beat the dogs. Yeah. Because it was just funny to In win Melbourne the final well. before Essendon. Uh and now, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> now I just like I'm just chilling. I obviously want to win, but yeah. I'm the year we've had has been incredible. So. Yeah. Well, with all that said, let's do some tips. Here we go. I'm the Hawks. Jeez. Hawks by four. 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 Hawks right. by four. You could go three and then they got three finals in <laughs> a row. That, that's what three. I read one more about the three. So I just feel like Blow it. No, I'm the way that they're playing and like all the stats back it up, like they, if they can just basically play this game on any way, shape, or form of their terms, they yep. win. And I think it, this basically almost all started in that comeback against Port, right? Yeah. Like in that game it's at Adelaide Oval. And it's like just from there, it's just like the launch pad. So, uh, I don't think they're afraid of Adelaide Oval. We saw them do that uh, against Collingwood earlier this year at Gather Round as well. Yep. They're not afraid of Adelaide <laughs> Oval. I think their forward line will still give me question marks. With if somebody's just not fight, like if there's no Dylan Moore, if there's no Chol, are you relying? Well, on they didn't Watson? have Chol last week. Is pretty it, much, exactly. Yeah. Is, like, is Kel Shadir going to step up in like yep, a massive again. spot? Yeah. I just think they have enough chutzpah. To get over the line. What a word. It's a great Hawks word. by four. Stats boy? Yeah, I'm going Hawks by 12. Get on the Hawk Bowl train. We've got Emery's in the comments. Bruce goal and his milestone. We haven't even mentioned that. Bruce 300th. He... So we're saying we'll port fire up for Ken. The Hawks will fire up for Bruce. He he's a club sub, legend. But yes. He'll be sub, he of course. Sub, but yes. he'll keep two couple of goals as a sub. He's the best sub in the business. Match winner. So I think, yeah, those two goals we'll in, that Hawks difference. will win by are from Bruce Bruce. He's going to kick a match winner. <laughs> there you go. That's you what might, I'm saying. You might have to dig into some top sport. Uh, Markets here, stats boy, and get Luke Bruce two plus goals fourth quarter made, <laughs> made up specifically. Genuinely, for you. that would be paying a lot. Nice one, Leo. I'm what's your pick? That. I'm going Port by twenty. What a hater! He goes yeah, for the Hawks. Uh, everyone fan. in the comments. Fake I man. started this week thinking we were going to win. Oh, that's how I've changed my tune, and I just think. So what? What's I don't know the exact stat off the top of my head, but after a team has got smacked. One week of finals, they normally bounce back. Is it eleven out of twelve? That's true. That, yeah, yeah. I when they've gotten, I think it's when it's over sixty points. Over 60 as well. Yeah. Like when so then we've yeah. actually gotten their heads really kicked in. It's been eleven in a row. Yeah. I think eleven in a row. But that's a very I, lucky stat. Surely, I, I'm going to contradict myself. I think we have a better team than Port Adelaide. I think they have a lot Ooh. of bland pa players on yep. their, on their team, like Charlie Dixon. But it's just going to be one of those ones where Zach Butters and Horn Francis and Rosie from the first bounce are just like. We've got you, Ken. And Georgiades kicks four. And Georgiades kicks four. four. Okay. Because we've got our hands full with. Because suddenly they've got Todd boys. Marshall, they've got Charlie Dixon, they've got Georgiades. It he sounds like you're up. talking to someone. Willie Rioli's already kicked two goals in the first <laughs> quarter, and away you go. The thing with. Like, I'm just I'm laying out like Leo's like nightmare. No, there is situation a way. Well, the thing awesome. with the forward line is I noticed with the dogs last week, the small forwards have got to get our interceptors away from their the big forwards. The dogs' forwards couldn't do that. Yep. That's why I'm surprised McEntee's dropped because he did that with Stewart yeah, earlier in he the was year. Good. I think we, Rioli can do it. Francis Evans needs to do it for Port. So we'll just see what happens in that regard. But if it's a one-on-one -on -one in our defense, we're not going to win too many of them. We need it to be a long kick in where we've got space to come in and spoil or mark. So that's going to be a big factor. Oh, but but 27, it's not even I a just, small Well, one. I'm going to get into it with my big call, but I, I think it'll be the mids that really set it up for Port. Okay. I'm, I think Zach Butters is going to have an absolutely mammoth game. Ooh. Yeah. We talked about this with Simeon though, like defensively though, that 
yes, power yep. midfield is going to be the crucial aspect. Like, yeah, that's can r- they play two ways? Let's mm. find out. There we go. All right, so two for Hawks, one for Port. Ironically, the Hawks fan is going for Port. Saturday, 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 Sat. Wait, no, Saturday night. <laughs> We're just going Saturday the gym jukebox. Night. This is good. GWS hosting Brisbane at NG. <laughs> this is fun. Has the line or anything changed here, Stats Boy? I don't I think it has. don't think so, no. $2.10. The Brisbane Lions are underdogs. Visiting the $1.74 GWS Giants. It's a big, big sound. They are four and a half point favorites. <laughs> uh, this is massive. I can't wait for this game. Uh I did tip on Sunday's show in my video from Brisbane that they will get their heads kicked in by GWS because GWS look like so much better of a and team. And you're a salty Carlton fan? And uh, <laughs> I was just a sad, angry blue. <laughs> at the same time, like, the entire situation set up here is it's the Lions away from home. Yep. Uh, and before – we'll do the teams because oh, yeah, we haven't even I've got a couple of other vibes on, uh, you know, that entire setup. There's a big in, one big in. So. Yeah, sort of. Mason Barker points out Jack Payne swings this game for Wait, me. He's, he's, in. he's in. He had a he had a knee brace on during the week. Doesn't mean he's out, does it? Oh, was that a, like a joke or something? That looked pretty bad. This he couldn't it. even move. So Mason points out Jack Payne swings this game for me. Jack Payne <laughs> on Hogan might maybe one of the best matchups. Kilo, kilo for kilo. kilo. I, I don't mind that. that. Was that something though that um, our good friend of the show, Lockie McCurdy, was talking about? How they want to sort of. Little like ring a Rosie get yeah. gets uh, Hogan onto Payne and Andrews onto Hogan and yeah. it'd be interesting to see how that plays out during the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think cool. because he's been named, I that's crazy. I do lo- like. I think it. I'll get to my tip in a second. I thought I think this is going to be tighter than I probably first imagined. I agree. Yeah, uh, I still do <coughs> work GWS hashtag spoiler alert. But Scrubbo <laughs> saying GWS by thirty plus, and Mason has gone on to point allows Harris Andrews to play his role. Yes, exactly I like that. Right. I like that. Uh, so, in for the Giants comes Toby Bedford. That's as a big Yeah. Uh, out goes Toby McMullen. The better, yeah, the, the Does Bedford Toby. go to Lockie Neal, do we think? Or Zorko. Zorko, perhaps. I think, yeah, Zorko. I Zorko think Lockie was so Neal. damaging last yeah. week. Why stupid. didn't you play Ching Cotter, Jim? I, look. <laughs> like, he's not the coach. <laughs> if I was the coach, Leo, you know who I would have played? It would have been me. But anyway, yeah, too bad I was like, I'm going to go coast. tag him and get towed. But either way. Uh, no, I would have played Chincotta. I still, to this day, I'm like, Doc and Chera look so cooked and underdone. Zach Williams as well. Yeah, They shouldn't have been out, all yeah. three of them. So if they played Chincotta, run him off half back, um, just to negate that punch from Zorko, I think it makes a big di- difference. And you, you saw it in the Zorko, second half, yeah. right? Like, yeah, who do we you, think? Oh, sorry. Keep going. That's right. And I think that's where you probably use like someone like Bedford to just go, mm. just stop him. Because mm. like Neil... I feel Dunkley, like, yeah. if you're getting clearance, like clearance tagging is just that much tougher. Whereas like if you're trying to like play a negating role um, against someone on the halfback, like you just stymie influence in such a greater way, mm. I think. Yep. And that sort of shutting down that one avenue makes a bigger difference than just going, oh, the Zorko just isn't like booting it off. No, the, and no one's on him, yeah. And just letting him run rampant. So. Mm. Bedford is a massive in, I think. Yeah, I've been putting Bedford on. Yeah, I really like that on Zorko. Neil, if he gets tagged, he could still get 30. He might not be, or 25, for example. He might not be as damaging, whereas Zorko running free, it just sets up so many of their goals. So it'd be interesting, though, because he could go to Neil. But yeah, our call would definitely be on uh, Zorko. So the last two times these teams have met, Stats Boy, what has happened? Well, the Giants won by 18. uh, Was it 64 to 82 at the Gabba? So they did really well there. And then uh, the time before that, uh, I had to double check, but it was in Canberra. 54 points the Giants won by. So they'll be really confident in this one, beating them both times this year. Uh, the Lions, and in that game, they actually were kicking their absolute heads in. Yeah, it should have been well. a lot they more. They just went, ah, we're fine. Pulled the foot off the gas a little bit. Uh, the Lions, though, they've won four of the last five away games uh, against the Giants, which was a bit of a surprise, but only two of those were at NG. They've, they very rarely played NG. They've played a lot of their games at uh, Monica. Well, that's yeah, what Rahul Canberra. Kochi is just trying there to do. There we go. Rahul Giants is destroy on. Brisbane because nine Brisbane players haven't played yes. at NG because they always play at Monica. They that's always, right. always, always have played at Monica. So, yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. It's weird. What's up with Canberra? We need uh, to fix that. I feel that. like, it's, I don't know if that's to do with, uh, well, the crowd, for example. Maybe it's to do with the crowds. They were like, oh, we'll just send it to Canberra because they haven't even sold out this game, which is a bit of a bit is of a this, worry. Is this the one with the Tom Green fan club? or is that No, that's, that's in Manic Manic because he's from Canberra. So, so Jim wants to start a Tom Green fan club. I am part of the Tom he Green fan Tom club. <laughs> <laughs> I want to just go to NG and just be like, all right, get around him, boys. We're going full orange. 
<laughs> I'm the leader of this. Shirts off. <laughs> I'm absolutely like orange. Like what more you do can I do? You do look like a very I'm good giant supporter. Basically, That's a giant racist. supporter at this point. No, <laughs> it is a big, big sound. Uh, but I had a couple of vibes on, as I mentioned earlier, right? So Brisbane Lions. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> away from home. Since the start of May, they've only lost three games. That is wild. one of them to Hawthorne. Let's go. Yeah, they, you always beat them. True. The weirdest part is they are the Chris Fagan Lions. They're one and three, one and three away in finals, right? Mm. So they've got this incredible run of like very, very good football. Top they four played this always, year. They're, yeah. they're really bloody good. And then you've still got their, like the sort of Damocles just hangs over their head mm. still of like, where are you playing, Brisbane? They're like, away. It's like, ah, you're stuffed, right? It's was just that, like. Was that one against Melbourne at the G? Uh, probably. Yeah, I reckon it was. It, it was, it was. The Lockie Neal went God mode. Yep. yep. So that's like a lot to overcome, but. Stats boy, you got some more stats. Uh, yeah, hit him with it. Do we want to hit him, hit him with it? Do we want to look at the uh, over under as well? So 167 and a half. Five of the last seven Ooh. meetings have gone over the total points, and we always talk about Brisbane's offense, but Brisbane's last seven matches have gone under, which really, really surprised me. I have to check that a few times. Is that because they just don't kick straight though? Or? They don't kick it straight. Does feel like that. yeah. <laughs> right, so because their offense was fifth this year, 92.5 points yep. a game. Giants were seventh at 88.4. Defensive of the Giants were ninth at 81 points a game. The Lions were second. So De- that's their defense the, is why it's going under more so than their offense. their defense is that good. Yeah. And they're spraying it worse than my five-year-old at the, t- <laughs> at the Dunny Bowl. Like, <laughs> here we go. So that's where I think those unders are coming from. Yep. More than anything. I'm like, still – I know I don't usually go against the stats on these ones, but I'm still leaning towards the over because five of the last seven meetings have gone over. Because surely if Brisbane just kick a tiny bit straighter, the Giants are such a good offense. So I'm I'd be back I'm leaning to the under. Okay, okay. Only because for three quarters last week, I thought GWS's defense was incredible. Mm. And as we just pointed out, Lions are the second best defense in the comp. So True. I'm thinking it's going to be like 75, 71 type thing. Yeah. And that but we'll see. They do have both. They, both teams have threatening offenses. So. And decent defenses. <laughs> so <laughs> That's the best part about it. Like, on one forward line for Brisbane, you got Charlie Cameron, Hipwood. It was an absolute spud last week. But yep. Zach Bailey always pops up for a goal. Had Cam the Gabba. Rainer. We'll see what happens there. Cam Rayner was massive for the Lions last week. Just sort of got them off to the fly. Was up and about. Joe Danaher does his thing. Jared Berry. And then I think for me, though, it's like the likes of Kai Lohman. Like, do they pop yep. up away from home as well? Like, as mm. I said, for Zach Bailey, like, can you get a Zach Bailey goal, Zach Bailey, when you're not in the Zach Bailey spot of the corner pocket of the Gabba? Yep. Just do it. That's a very good point. Just do it. Raheel asked as well, who do you think uh, Harris Andrews will play on? That's a He's tough one. Go to Probably go to Hogan, Hogan yeah. to start with and maybe rotate on Cadman and things Cadman like that. And Red. So, yeah, and that's where the Giants' forward line is. You've got da- named at the moment Darcy Jones, Jesse Hogan, Toby Green, uh, Brent Daniels, Cadman, and Isaac Cumming. So Coming up forward, I like It's an awesome sort of mix. Yep. And they didn't bring back Riccardi or anything like this. For He's a little bit stiff, but they that worked really well last week. Even though they lost, everything just clicked. Well, they got big yeah. Lockie Keefe. And Lockie Keefe as well. <laughs> exactly. he kicked, what the hell was that about? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Where, where did he come from? <laughs> Is that the moon? Is that uh, the moon? Let's <laughs> do right. it. There we go. Stats boy, give us some more player stats before we get player to Player stats? Yeah, let's get into it. Uh, is it a Toby Green revenge game, lads? Is that, that Maybe that's a different sort of big question. Jim's laughing in a comment. If Charlie goals do the Brisbane, 20 Brisbane fans sing the song, says Brooke Watson. <laughs> Take me home. <laughs> yeah, they actually did that at the grand final that last year. They, oh, even when they I didn't like play it. it, they were still singing it. Uh, yeah. Do we think it's a Toby Green revenge game? He's got three plus goals in his last three finals at NG Stadium. So home finals. Averages 19 disposals and two goals against the Lions. I really think he's going to bounce back. He very rarely has two really bad games. I in a want row. you to explain your concept of revenge. Uh, yeah, from I was like, last <laughs> week. From last week, revenge. How's he revenge? That's a very good point. Because he played a crap game last year. Last week. Last week. From last week, just revenge uh, against himself. He's looking in the mirror. He's like, I need revenge on this guy. He's going to get that mirror. Sorry, there's no revenge there at all. <laughs> you staring in the mirror. Who's my most hated man? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Got to fire myself up somehow. Revenge against the media. I don't. I don't know. Uh, his other no mate. No one was backing him. In. Like, like no one well, except Alex. To be honest, Toby Green. Toby Green wasn't the reason the Giants lost that game, but he didn't. He help. didn't help. So. No. Uh, yeah, let's just I think he will bounce that. back. I Perhaps think he, will he bounce could back. help avenge the loss. Avenge. There we it's go. It's a big uh, matchup, him on Starsevich, because Starsevich is a very good lockdown defender. I agree. But yeah. Starsevich Toby Green is, is a so superstar. athletic as well. There's like two mm. or three different moments during last week where, like, I've actually seen Starsevich play in person before. <clears> and, like, but seeing him in the Gabba, I don't know. It's something about those lights. 
And it's like how the footy moves goes further under lights and in night games. <laughs> I still swear to God, that's how it works. Maybe like, the if you watch a game, hypnotized. like the game, like that Sydney GWS game during the day, like they're kicking, it's like, that oh, was that far. You go to the night games, like, that went 60 metres. That was sick. <laughs> it's, it's, that it's, night air. it's that night air. What are you talking about? Shouldn't that stop but, the. Oh, anyway, no. No, I think it should be. It's colder. It's going further. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I thought it would be hotter further. I'd just actually, reminder. Scientists. Not gym. a scientist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're definitely not scientists. Not yet. I'm still working on it. But oh, my God. The Stasevich took like a sick mark on the boundary line, and there was two other moments where he's just like scooping stuff up out of nowhere. Like his speed around the ball uh, and his speed to the ball were the big things that stuck at, st- stood out to me. If stuck he's on out. Toby Green, I love that matchup for the Lions. So, mm. um, Interesting. But Toby just has a – we talked about this with Haney last week. Like, Toby also still has the ability to just, what's this? Yeah. Scruff in the neck. He's Game. done that a lot in Come finals. here, you. Yeah. And uh, he could easily do that, especially at NG. Give us some more stats, stats, man. Uh, before that, the comments don't rate Toby Green in this matchup. So you got Raheel. He reckons Toby Green is going to get locked down by Stasevic, as you guys mentioned. And he punches him like Rankin. <laughs> he, he could well do that because he's an angry man. Uh, and then Mason Barker. Stasevic kept Toby to four touches last time they played. So he's getting some stats for us in the comments. That's very nice. Check out. Get him uh, in the show. Yeah, we should. Uh, Tom Green, <laughs> he's also had 30-plus disposals in nine of his last 10 games at NG. That, uh, that Full name, my beloved Tom Green. Jim's beloved Tom, Tom Green. Tom James Clements Green. Memorial. <laughs> <laughs> Memorial footy <laughs> player. There we go. Nine of his last 10. So that's really good. Uh, yeah, get on that with top sport. I think 30-plus is a lock. Kyle Lohman, uh, we had a look away from home and against the Giants, he's not too good, but he does have seven goals across his last three games. I'm still pretty confident on Kyle Lohman. I think he's stepped up his game across the last month. Then the other one, Dane Zorko, 25 plus in five of his last six games. But if he gets tagged, mm, I'm staying clear of him away, for the best. That's, that's just stay my uh, tip on that one. Yeah, I'll pay that. Uh, Kyle Lohman, his season's been fantastic. He's got yeah. 29 goals in 24 games. And I think the only sort of trip up I would have is he kicked... 0 2 against Again, GWS last yeah. time around. He kicked two against the Pies in the game that they lost. Yep. Uh, he kicked three against the Bombers when they smashed them, and then two last week against Carlton. They're not finals teams, those other two the are. The Pies yeah. game was a worry because it sort of just went MIA. That was at the G, though. The other two were at home, and you're like, okay, cool. Away from home, yeah. He kicked five against the Tigers earlier this season, but I, the only worry I have is the away from the game. Yeah. I Kyle think he can get one, uh, so I'm happy with that. But, yeah, Zorka I'd be staying away from. Nice one. All right, should we bring up the AFL Today Show? Same game multi yes. for this game. Check Let's it out on Top this, Sport. I'm going to write this multi. Here we go. Here we go. Do you want me to go through it? Or do you want to go through it, Jim? Tom, my beloved, Green, 30-plus uh, disposals. I like that a lot. I, I think like he goes it. massive at uh, NG. Will Ashcroft, 20-plus. He's got beautiful hair. He has a beautiful game. Uh, not to be confused with Marcus Ashcroft, if you're stats boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently. Finn Callahan, 20 plus as well. That's a very, like very it. sneaky like one. From He's been getting 25 man. every week, so I like yeah, that. really like that. Jesse Hogan, 2 plus at home. Should be a lock. Cam Rayner, anytime goal. And the other one is Aaron Cadman, anytime goal. So the I Rayner really one... Like that. The Rayner one... Do you trust him away from home as well? In my yeah, opinion. I think he's been so Can consistent. Can you trust him? Yeah, oh, I haven't said that. No, I do trust Cam Rayner. <laughs> Second half of the season, he's been elite... Uh, very good for the super coach sides, as we uh, love on this show. What are you rating this? You, I'm rating that a 9 out of better 10. Better than the other one. I think oh. that's better. Okay. Chaos. Yeah, we'll just see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Chaos here. So in the, <laughs> in the comments, we've got the Brett Daniels legacy game from Rahil. Um, <laughs> yes, do you remember that in 2019, kick the match winner? I do. Yes. That was epic. Yeah. Rahil is posted about that on our socials earlier in the week. I did. I remember watching. Marcus. Brett Daniels was like... I think so. We were all over the Daniel stuff for last week's game, where we stats boy. Yeah, we were, and he did absolutely nothing. He cost it. a multi of ours. But Revenge. So, Revenge. He broke our hearts, so he's going to. I think uh, did this one's win. Pointed out redemption, maybe stats boy. That's a better word. Redemption. Correct. Game. Redemption. So maybe a Brent it. Daniels redemption game as well as a legacy game. But I love that. And Barzano pops on. Yes. Andrews Hogan, Taylor Danaher, tasty matchups everywhere. Yes. That's exactly right. Harris Andrews, and like just. That ability for them to sort of swing big dudes ish yep. around to that sort of big, uh, like the GWS forward line is so potent at times. It can also go completely MIA though, right? If Hogan's the middle not, part of the season, yeah. If Hogan's not firing, who knows what's going to happen? But the Taylor Danaher one is awesome as well. We haven't really even talked about the GWS defense up against Sam that Taylor, offense, Jack so Buckley, Taylor just Buckley. Awesome, yeah. Let's go. I like this. Uh, so 
in terms of the best bet tip vibe, that's the same game multi. Mm -hmm. If there's anything else that you want to stick to, I mean, do you want to back Toby Green? Do you feel good about him? I do, yeah. He's not really – he hasn't even featured in our multi, but maybe some of the odds and things like that. But I'm happy to back him. Just 15 and two goals. I think that's a real Toby sort of game, but he could surpass that and have a bit of a bit of a legacy game. Nice one. What about you, Leo? Any vibes? I like Ashcroft for 20 plus. I yeah. do like that Maybe a, a little dabble in the 25 as well, but Ooh. 20 to play it safe. Interesting. Good nice. one. All right, the big questions – Oh, the big question, because this is both so, like quite, this is such a good big question because it's very oh, big and it's for both teams. If both teams play at their best, who's better? That's such oh, a simple. That is a great way. way. That's, oh, it could be the best thing I've ever come that to is, this show. That is actually. <laughs> Thanks. Well done. Thanks, mate. Great job. I'm off. I'm off. <laughs> it only oh, took bye. him two years, but he did something good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very proud of you, Stats, man. Got to be, got to do something at some point. Thank you. <laughs> Are uh, we going to answer it or are we just going to no, keep talking about it? No, just, it's it. such a great question <laughs> that question we shouldn't answer. It can never be answered <laughs> until they play the game. Uh, no, we can answer it. If they play oh. their best, I think GWS. Just, I just don't trust Brisbane to play. If they're but, playing at their best, at the they're not at the Gabba. But their best is kicking straight, though. Sure. That's my point. So my point in this question is I think at their best, Brisbane are better. But at their finals best, so I'm just sort of contradicting myself again. At their finals best, GWS have proven to be better. But if both teams just bring their absolute best and kick straight, then I'm, I'd am i be backing Brisbane. Nah, but, GWS win. But in terms GWS. of who I believe in, I'm leaning towards GWS. I think if like the likes of Hogan and Green are firing, you've got Brent Daniels doing stuff, you've got that back line playing at his best, I kind of just yeah, trust Giants. GWS more. Yeah, no, I agree with that, but at their best, I think Brisbane. Nice so it turned out to be a pretty bad question. A few more comments. Bo says hi. Thank you for joining on, uh, jumping on Bo. He's like, say hi back, idiots. Oh, it's Marcus, like, okay, Bo. Marcus is gone. Uh, could be the third talls and smalls that win the game. That's a very good point. Big call from did the Swans win? Dan Earth three plus out in the full. Can you bet on that? <laughs> I, top sport. We, but we can we can chuck something on, the on there for top sport. Buckley gets a Backman medal for saving Isaac's head and for that Giants. For yes. that, the Giants deserve the win. Yeah. Uh, so good bloke of the week is a, an award we give away on NFL Australia each week. Yeah, good we bloke of the week. Jack Buckley. Back, Buckley runs away with that last week for saving Heaney's life, basically, yeah, at that pretty point. Much. So. Oh, Bo, I'll, I'll <laughs> shout you out, Bo. Yes, I like, I I like you, Bo. <laughs> Buzzardo <laughs> points out Brisbane kicked eight goals, 16 in the last meeting to GWS' 13-4. I remember watching Ooh. that game and going, I don't know how they're losing this game. Mm. They did. Uh, with all this said, I think it's just so much of a big ask for the Brisbane Lions to get this. Agreed. But... If there was ever a time to start swinging that the wrong way around, right, and just going, ha-ha, we can win away from home. See, it's not at the G. You don't have the Melbourne thing hanging over your head. You're playing against GWS at NG in front of 23,000 people. It's not a wildly imposing arena to go into and win. No. And we've seen them play like <clears throat> a weird scrappy game that they probably should have already won against them this year, even though they got their heads kicked in one other time. So... I think this game is going to be awesome. I think it's going to be tight. I think GWS win it. I've got them by 14, and I sort of went Ooh, back yeah. and forth with, like, I think we had uh, GWS 30-plus in the comments earlier on. And uh, as Scrubbo points out, last meetup, GWS didn't lead on the scoreboard until, like, 12 minutes remaining the fourth. Yeah, that was wild. That it was game. a crazy game. Mm. D D Lions and should have won, yeah. I just think GWS at home, Tom Green, more of the ball. Yep. We haven't even mentioned like Coniglio and Kelly. Lockie and Neal. Midfield and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like this sort of midfield group of GWS, I just feel like they're just that little bit more reliable. Yeah. No, I, I'd agree with Especially that. at home. And with the Lions away, I just can't do it. So GWS by 14. Stats boy. Yeah, very similar. Giants by 12. Uh, yeah, I think just, just too good. I think this is going to be really close. I originally had it a lot more. I think similar to you. And then the more we talked it out, the more we talked about uh, yeah, yeah, in the midweek Madness show, if Brisbane play yet yeah, near their best, this is going to be really close, but Giants can just get over the line. That tsunami in the last quarter, they're going to be too quick for them. picked both games by 12 points. Have I? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, I think that's going to happen. Nice. <laughs> I think Giants by four. So, okay. Uh, one thing as well last week with Brisbane, I know they were up 60-0. Sorry to bring that up again, Jim. But they, <laughs> oh, they kind of like, they didn't convince me from that point. I don't know. They're just sort of like, don't put the foot on the gas or like have patches in games well, the where they're not playing the end, their yeah. best. and. Mm. I know they're probably like, all right, we're not going to lose from here. But like, is this where I get to point out if, as I said in the little video that I did on Sunday, if Pito marks that at the, we'd kick, Carlton would kick three goals to start the third quarter. He's only had a chance. Pito <laughs> misses a bloody chess mark. It goes back inside 50. The momentum complete, instead, Brisbane go back up yeah. the other way, kick a goal. It's a complete momentum killer. 
if the Blues had have kicked that goal or, or like another inside 50 then, stop that one from happening. Gave him a scare. Who knows? Like everybody was so ready to turtleneck of the Lions fans. They're just like, <laughs> oh my God, what is happening? And all the Blues fans are like, fake fans, let's go. And I'm like, tropical Jim just going, this is great. I don't know what's happening. But then it goes the other way. And like that's kind of the thing, right? I think this Lions team, there is – there's lapses in games. A oh, lack 100%. Of, a lack of killer instinct. And that sort Four of quarter efforts. Every time they're putting it out in the full, kicking eight goals, 16. It's an exact sort of like uh, damning sort of the next array yeah. of e- examples, right? It's like every time it happens, you're like, yeah, they lack heart. They lack grit. Yeah. They're too fancy. They live in too warm a climb. I don't know. <laughs> like it's just, but it's something that is almost inbuilt into this team. And away from home in the finals, like you could see it just biting them once more, right? So definitely, I'm. Um, if this was at the Gabba, I'd be tipping Brisbane. It's at GWS. I'm going to tip them. Nice, uh, tricky one. We get other other vibes here. They aren't as good as they were last year, says Rahil. Or Lions, no. Lions, they, probably not. No. Oh, their Maybe back half has been not. good, but definitely not as good. Yeah. And there we go. All right, we've all tipped GWS. I don't know about this. I don't Galaxy like brain. It's tough when there's Galaxy, Galaxy brain. brain. No, <laughs> Brisbane by sixty plus. No, my first, <laughs> my first initial thing, obviously, as I walked out of the Gabba the other day, was the Brisbane. I've watched enough, yeah. West that Arvo, and then so they look so and much better. Yeah, like, yeah. What are we doing? So yeah. I'm, I've got to stick with that in my stupid Galaxy brain. There's only two games. We can't be different. Exactly. All right, let's do it. Big call for the weekend ahead. <laughs> what are we looking at? I'm going to go Toby Green four plus. I think he gets off the Ooh. chain, pulls a heen man, wins the game off his own back. GWS into another prelim. Off we go. I think even though Starsevich has done such a great job on him in the past, like I feel like Toby Green doesn't have two crummy finals in a row. Like maybe. No, no I agree. And I feel like this might be the one where he goes bang. Leo, you got one? Port Jump Hawks, five goal lead at quarter time. Oof. Are you trying to moz him 100%? <laughs> yes, no. No, I know. You're just being honest. I think it'll be, to add to this, I think Zach Butters will have 30 disposals and – one or two goals, I reckon. Oh, okay. I think Rosie will hit the scoreboard. I think Horn Francis will hit the scoreboard. And I think it's literally just going to be those three going like, we are the team. We There's no <laughs> no we one else. are the team. We'll just do everything. Who are we kicking to? Dixon? No, we're going for goal. Like, <laughs> we are smart. the team. It works better. Like, that's literally. fine. Literally. So, Dixon can be a decoy, yeah. And the other <laughs> thing is, I think at some point, the size might come back to impact us, but... That plays a factor as well. Yeah, like fair that. enough. Uh, yeah, I'm putting a little bit of them of the moz on. I'm a bit. Uh, I think I'll be a big one. You are bit. just full moz. Yeah, Scrubbo more... says, "Imagine hedging your bets on your own team. You're spot on, Scrubbo." I love hedging. I'm not. I'm not going to bet. Hedging on board. Ha- happiness is great, but at the same time, like uh, there is a line that I continuously lose. I continuously <coughs> use rather. Uh, Leo is now more moz than boy, and away we go. <laughs> Leo Mazalali. The. Jeez. <laughs> How many drinks? No, <laughs> the vibe here, though, for, I think you hit on an interesting part that we didn't really talk too much about. Like <clears throat> Butters, Rosie, and Hornet all love kicking snags. Mm. Yep, and, and if, if they, they pop can off, fire, pop yeah. off a one or two, eh? like, similar to Sydney's midfield. Definitely, yep. exactly. Stats boy, what's your big call for the weekend? Oh, man? I love a bit of Massimo, and this is just to rub it into Essendon fans again. Massimo, oh, twenty-five plus, ten score involvements, and a goal. Ten on this. score involvements. Yeah, I'm just thinking oh. this is his legacy game. He's going to be best on. It's going to be best. Ten. <laughs> ten. <laughs> ten score involvements. It's got a big call for a reason, man. <laughs> and this is just going to happen. Massimo has had an awesome year. He's been building to this moment. Dominated last time against Port. He's going to be best on ground in a final. Even though he's so young, oh, you can take out the ten score involvements <laughs> and it'd still be a big call. I don't you know, know why. Right. I wrote, wrote down twenty five and a goal, and I'm like ten score involvements. <laughs> anyway, it's good. Now I believe <laughs> one of you actually hit your big call last week. It might have been Leo. Did I? What did yeah. I say? What? There's a couple of good ones in there. But with I that in remember. mind, what are we keeping an eye on this weekend? A lot. So what are we keeping an eye on last week for, as it pertains to these teams? Uh, we talked about the Cats' defense with that Stewart. It was fine. How did they battle the power bigs? The power bigs did not bother the cats at all. I think the right? power bigs need to battle themselves. Exactly. Yeah, that is. It was horrible. <laughs> they were so, so bad. How does that work for power against the Hawks? Like, <laughs> it doesn't bode great for the power. Yep. Uh, Hawks defense against the dogs' offensive weapons, specifically their bigs, right? Turns out that was fine. Mm. Yeah. Like, Jamara didn't do anything. Norton threatened early, did nothing. Like, Darcy, again, same sort of thing, right? So it feels like that's a nice blueprint to go into this game for the Hawks. Against the power? Definitely. The Definitely. other way? Yep, agreed. Hogan and Green versus whoever the Swans threw at them. 
it's a bit of a wash, I guess. Green, not a great Hogan game. Was Hogan really was really good. good. Mm. So, a bit of a weird one. And Brisbane's accuracy was the other one that we had. <laughs> keep an that. eye on. Every week. We're just going to keep that for this week. <laughs> keep an eye on Brisbane's accuracy. Danaher, Hipwood, Cameron versus Buckley, Taylor, etc. It's a fun matchup. It's a weird matchup. They're, we saw this go pear shape for them last time they played this team. That was at home, though. So, we'll see what happens. Joey Duckett's. What's more likely? He kicks three goals or he kicks three out on the full? You know? Yeah. Or think? three goals, both. three. Three goals, three is a real, a yeah. real Joey game. Three goals, three. Hipwood, he just did nothing last week. No, I didn't even know he played. Exactly. Exactly. He was in the back line for a bunch of it too. Like well, it right oh, yeah. End. I forgot about that. Right at the end he was too. Uh, and Chucky Cameron. I mean, he had a couple of big ones, but same time, Brisbane's accuracy is going to be massive. GWS... The question for them, keep an eye on, how do they bounce back from that heartbreak? It's always really hard That's to tough. play a game that Because you're like, tough. are we really bad? <laughs> so That's we, what I'd be thinking. We had that game won. Mm. We won that game. And then Isaac Heaney decided that we did not. Mm. And you're like, That's not fair. We're 22 people. He's but one man. And he's like, but one man I am. <laughs> I'm Heen man. And away he went. So how do they do that? How does the GWS crowd back them up? Like, How does all this sort of like crowd... Yeah, exactly. There's that's no it. one going like, there. That's exactly right. Yeah. Like, how can they get the tsunami fired up in front of 23,000 people? Like, yeah. Is it going to work? How do they go? Hawk speed at Adelaide Oval? Yeah, that'd be yeah. fun. Yeah. Because right, that... Port looked so slow last week. Exactly. Yeah. They gave up at halftime, Port. Yeah. Will they do that again? <laughs> Ken's out of a job if they do. And away we go. Will they fight to save Ken one more time, that power team? We hit on that earlier. Will they? That was a team that, like, body language expert. Gross. At half time. Like, I know. They were shot like, into uh, the hoods down. They walked out. Sad. Rosie had like two good minutes, two and a half good minutes, and then just stunk it up the rest of the time. Yep. And it was bad. So mm. do they get that again? Let's find out. Uh, and my favorite, Ginnivan's response. <laughs> oh, Jack Ginnivan, what's he going to do? How's he going to? All he did was go, yep, see you at the prelim. Sick man. <laughs> and everyone's just like, oh. What's what cocky? What do you mean by response? He played well last week. No, the, I guess response the response to, to the funeral, media, the media backlash beat up. and all that. Yeah, but he he lives for that, so he'll be fine. Yeah, I love it. He'll be fine as long as he kicks a goal for that multi. We're laughing. Yes. All right. Anything else that you you gentlemen would like to keep an eye on? I think you've uh, yeah hit the nail you've on the head. Well there, Jim. Well done. I like footy. I like talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I like too bad attending soon. Awful. Got a few more comments though. If we want to end on that, Scrubbo uh, goes. In my opinion, Chol had a flat week. Yeah, I think in everyone's opinion, I think he'll fire up and challenge for Mark of the Year. That's a good one. Last he weekend. almost took Mark of the Year last week. Yeah, well, he, he always goes up for him. But <laughs> was he that the one over his teammate last week? Yeah, probably. Yeah. And then uh, Power Prod Star, he's back. Suns looked at Geelong and said, "No, nah, we're not going to go for that." Mac Andrew, you own Gold Coast now. What a laugh! What that, a laugh! That is a good laugh. Give him a Gets belted in Adelaide. <laughs> Rahul, Rahul said that twice. Rahul's just all over <laughs> He just wants him to get belted. Rahul also pointed out Butters gets pushed in the ribs by Newcomb in the first quarter. Oh, that that could definitely happen. That is actually like keep an eye Little on. Bump. Keep an eye on like mm. w- what sort of treatment Butters gets, I mm. guess. And like le- you can do legal treatment if you're just going for a little bump or something. So I do like because we do have power prawn star on the uh, on the chat. Like I'm fascinated. Like we talked to Simeon yesterday on yesterday's show about the vibe for the power fans and how it must have been just a kick in the guts last week after they'd built themselves up, Tom Stewart's not named, and they just get their hits kicked in. Mm. Like going to this game against a rampant Hawthorne team, like it is set up for the perfect, like come from the clouds, no one believed in us, boys. Yeah, literally. Here we go, we're back. Port Adelaide, we're second on the ladder for a reason. Yep. I'm going to put this out to you, Power Prawn Star. Like is that the vibe from Powers fans? Like do you believe – it was almost the question, right? Or are you just like, oh, God, not again? So now we just wait for him to reply. Yeah, he's got to write. I think right most power fans are just, yeah, they've sucked. The belief's been sucked out of them. Yeah, no, they're no wary. Chance. Yeah. Wary. There you go. Nice one. All right. <laughs> and with that, I think we'll leave the live stream. We'll leave the show because this will be up fun. the uh, actual podcast itself as well later on, which will be very fun. Yep. yep. And, of course, you can watch this all again on YouTube. Just watch it again. Just all the biting <laughs> analysis and away we go. Whiskey and it's going to be awesome. But that'll do the AFL Today Show for today. We'll be back on Sunday for a huge rap show. Get around it. Fun. I'm a bit worried about how it's going. Like, are we going to find Leo? Like, just will he be on his way to? Who would you be playing? You'd be playing Sydney, right? So probably not. not. He's on a he's on a treadley. 
just ring, ding, 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 all the way up to Hume. Oh, thanks, uh, everyone. Lol's Cow, great show as usual. Thanks, Brooke guys. Watson. Brooke, thank, thank you, you very much, Brooke. Love the support. Yeah, awesome. Appreciate it. So, any other comments and everything you want us to hit on for Sunday's show, we will be, uh, we won't be live for that, but you can Cheers, chuck, them, chuck them in here. We'll address them on Sunday's show as well. Joel, you legend. Thank Lions you. Lions fans. Up, up the Lions and know about that. So, I feel like we're <laughs> Raheel gonna... is a savage. Raheel. See after Ken gets sacked. I love it. Raheel's I love just that. Double barrel. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, so I think the only difference we had in the tip. So I've gone uh, Hawks and GWS. Leo's had, the only difference um, with Paul because Paul he's Paul GWS. Yeah. Hawks was, GWS. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be back on Sunday night. Yes. Well, Sunday afternoon. It'll be evening by the time the video is probably live. But it would be awesome. Chucking in comments here, and we will address them on the Sunday show as well. It's going to be a cracking weekend of footy, and I cannot wait. So make sure you subscribe across all the socials for the AFL Today Show. What have we got? We've got YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, X, all the good stuff. Yep. And, of course, all the other shows that we do. We've got a lot of them. The AFL Today Show, the AFLW Today Show, the Cricket Today podcast, uh, the Football Today podcast, which is back and flying, NFL Australia, which is uh, week two, has been previewed. It's a cracking, cracking show, myself and Gaz. NBA Australia will be back very soon as well. And hold all tickets. The GGs. Alex is all over that one with uh, Xavier. And it's yep. very good. Done by our other producer, homie. So get around him like the squid getting around those twisties and the hot dog at the Gabba that he just deleted. So thank you to both these gentlemen for sticking with me on a Thursday night. The Stats Boy. Thank you. And Social Boy. Go Hawks. <laughs> hot ball. Out of 10, how excited are you for this game? 10. I'm so excited. What are you going to be doing for the game? Probably just go to the pub. Which pub? London Tavern. <laughs> We're going to the London Tavern, boys! London Tavern with Guinea. He's Woo! Gonna... <laughs> I'll dress, we'll get Stats Boy dressed up as Guinea again. No, that's not happening ever <laughs> again. Actually, this is now an AFL Today skit. We're dressing you the as Guinea. The fans let me down with that. London no Tavern. views on that video. It was, was a lot of effort. No, anyway, AFL Today <laughs> show. We'll catch you Sunday for more AFL Today. Until then, look after yourselves. Go Hawk and footy <laughs> finals. Ah. Uh, back. Yeah! If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website gamblinghelponline.org.au.